Do you have questions about how to extend your VOA, your visa on arrival? Coming up is a post from the Immigration Department, and the government responds to questions about the fuel price hike. Stay tuned. Welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is September 7th, 2022, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? It is another hot day coming up. And at 10 a.m. in the morning, it is already 30.1 degrees Celsius. Humidity is 64% again, and wind speed is 5.9 kilometers per hour. And a little hazy, but a lovely day up north again, and I hope it is lovely wherever you are too. Okay, some good news today and a lot of discussion about the fuel price increase and how that is affecting everybody and what is going on. And so let's get into the numbers. Numbers are looking good. National new cases, 3,607. National recoveries, 5,136. National deaths, 28, a little up there. Bali new cases, 72, up from the other day, but remember that was Monday. And Bali recoveries, 97, and Bali deaths, 2. And the weekly positivity rate is stable at 9.25%. So overall, numbers are looking good. And there is not a lot of news about COVID lately because, well, everything is focused right now on the fuel hike. And so that is what we're talking about today. First, let's take a look at this. I got this feed from the immigration yesterday and my Instagram account, and it is about how to extend the visa on arrival. So let's take a look at what they say. And this is like a little slideshow that they put here. So page one, the application submission, original passport of foreigner and copy of the passport on identity page and the VOA sticker page. And you see here, they've got the identity page. They don't have the VOA sticker page, but you need to have a photocopy of that as well. Print out the flight ticket to leave Indonesia. You have to have proof that you are leaving. And I know people say, well, they didn't check me. Sometimes they check and sometimes they don't. If they check and you don't have it, that can be a problem. So always safe to have a ticket going out. And it doesn't have to be an airline ticket. It could be a ticket on a ferry going, say, to Batam. Then we have the application form, or per DIM 23, and it is available in the immigration office, and you fill it out there. And the notes. Foreigners have to come to the immigration office. Foreigners can come to the nearest immigration office. Apply seven working days before your permit is expired. VOA extension is 500,000 per person and overstay fine is 1 million per passport. So if you've got your family here, let's say you've got four people and you overstay by a day, that's 4 million rupees, so ain't cheap. And do you have to do all of this yourself? No, you can use an agent to do this. There is an extra cost, of course, if you use an agent, but it saves you going back and forth to the immigration office. You can get a agent to do all this for you. It's extra cost, but not that much. But really, if you're going to be here for 60 days, do you want to go back and forth? Some people do to save the 50 bucks, but a lot of people don't. And so that's why there are agents. And so you can use an agent to do this. For further information, check out the immigration website. And a link is down below, as always. And so that is what you have to do if you've got a VOA and you want to extend it. No, you can't extend it at the airport when you come in. People are still asking that question. You have to wait. So you come in, do your 23 days, go into the immigration office and extend it or get a agent and do it that way. Okay, simple enough. Any questions? Leave a comment below. Okay, let's get on to the fuel hike because all of the media sources I'm reading, everything is about the fuel hike one way or the other. So first we're going to take a look at how did the president respond to the possibility of protests, which of course happened yesterday and that will be the next story. President Jokowi responds to mass protest against fuel price hike. So President Jokowi said on Monday when he was asked about how he's 
going to deal with protests by labor organizations along with university students are joining together with them. The president said, this is a democratic country, express yourselves properly. So this story is yesterday. And among those planning to hold protests were the Labor Party and the Confederation of Indonesian Trade Unions, KSPI, and reportedly they were going to mobilize tens of thousands of workers to the House of Representatives. But from the reports that I've read, there were nowhere near tens of thousands of workers. It, it seems pretty muted, actually. And protests were supposed to happen across 33 province, provinces in Indonesia. Initial reports put the numbers much lower. The president made a response that you would expect. It's a democratic country. People want to protest, protest, but do it properly, meaning no riots, no burning things down, no violence. What happened? Rallies take place in major cities to oppose fuel price hike. So people rallied in the country's biggest cities on Tuesday, demanding that the government reverse its decision to raise subsidized prices as they claimed the price hike would hurt low-income households. In Jakarta, protests were concentrated in front of the House of Representatives building, spearheaded by several labor organizations and the Labor Party, which was founded last year by prominent labor union leader Said Iqbal. And the Labor Party has registered to field candidates for the 2024 general election. Okay. That's new. I didn't know that. In front of hundreds of workers, Iqbal said that the labor unions would continue, continue to hold nationwide protests until the end of the year or the government reverses its decision. He said, it's clear that the government did not consider the impact of subsidized fuel price increases on farmers, fishermen, and workers. And rallies, according to this article, took place in around 20 other provinces, not 33. Iqbal predicted that price increases would hurt workers disproportionately, particularly factory workers who had not received an increase, he said, in the past three years. And as I was mentioning the other day, fuel price increases are very sensitive in this country, and they have traditionally spelled trouble for Indonesia's presidents. But in order to soften the blow of this increase, the administration has announced rollouts of a series of social aid packages worth $1.62 billion or 24.17 trillion rupiah. And these include direct cash transfers. According to some political analysts, this gives Jokowi a chance to recover from any potential hit on his approval ratings and maintain political stability if he manages to distribute social aid effectively and evenly. They also predicted that Jokowi would likely face minimal political resistance, particularly because lawmakers and academics tend to agree that the government had no choice but to cut fuel subsidies to protect the state budget. But not everybody agrees with this. Responding to a labor rally in Madan and North Sumatra on Tuesday, the province's legislative council, DPRD, said it would send a letter to Jokowi asking him to revoke the policy. According to North Sumatra DPRD speaker, Baskami Ginting, he said, we stand by the protesters. Thousands of police were deployed across Jakarta, guarding gas stations, fearing that those could become targets of mounting anger over the price hike that unions say hurt workers and the urban poor the most. Okay, so the government has announced a series of measures to ease the pain for lower income people. Let's take a look at a few of those. Government seeks to avert fuel price hike on public transportation sector. The government is preparing to cushion the blow of the recent subsidized fuel hike on the transportation sector, considering that the cost of fuel is a major component in transportation. Several steps have been taken by the transportation ministry, including adjusting the tariff for economy class public transportation, especially for land transportation modes. According to the transportation minister, Pak Budi, he said the tariff will be determined by the study we are conducting and the results will be conveyed in the near future. I don't know why they didn't do this beforehand. And this is one of the problems with some of these measures that are being announced. They're not being done immediately. It's, oh, we're going to have to study this. I'm not sure why they didn't think of this in advance. And Pak Budi said that there is going to immediately be an online motorcycle taxi fare adjustment. He said, we will announce the tariff adjustment for Ojol in the next two days. And Ojol is apparently online motorcycle taxis. I didn't even know when I saw this. I thought, what's an Ojol? Okay, so 
Ojo is an online motorcycle taxi, and the amount will be adjusted according to the latest fuel price hike. The minister said the impact of the subsidized fuel price increase on economy class C air and rail transportation modes would not be too significant. However, a study on the effects will still be carried out with the findings to be announced in the near future. He said for air transportation, we're currently seeing a downward trend in flight ticket prices at certain times. Are people seeing a decrease in ticket prices? If you are, or if you aren't, leave a comment below. Thanks. The minister also stated that to help ease the burden on the community and also on the transportation sectors, the government is providing social assistance through wage subsidies for 16 million workers with a salary below 3.5 million rupees a month, approximately 235 U.S. dollars or 350 Australian dollars. In addition, subsidies in the transportation sector for Ankot, minivan drivers, online motorcycle taxi drivers, and for fishermen are set aside in the fuel subsidy allocation, the distribution of which will be carried out by regional governments. Okay, so that is going to be an issue. This goes to the regional governments now to make sure that this aid gets handed out appropriately promptly to the right people. As I mentioned in the last video, police were depo deployed when the hike was announced because people were expecting, authorities were expecting hoarding to take place. Well, what's happened? Let's take a look here in Bali. Bali police will act on fraudulent fuel buyers suspecting perpetrators with oil and gas law. According to the head of public relations for Bali police, they will be using number 22 of 2000 and one, the law of Republic of Indonesia concerning oil and gas when they crack down on people hoarding and selling. He said police were deploying personnel to anticipate fraudulent purchases of fuel at gas stations. And previously, amid the heated issue of rising fuel prices, Badung police had arrested two people <laughs> with four cherry cans of Pertolite at a gas station in Badung. And let's take a look at that. That's another article here. Transporting subsidized fuel using luxury cars, perpetrators claim to be resold to Pertamini. So two perpetrators of hoarding subsidized fuel were arrested by the police, and they said they were buying gas, sticking it in the jerry cans so that they could sell it again. So they filled up four jerry cans of 144 liters, <laughs> and they put it in a luxury sedan, this article says. I love I love the way news is reported here. And it said they will sell it to Perta Mini at a higher price, so they get a lot of profit. And Perta Mini, what are Perta Mini? You know, those little gas stations that you see around the island. So the perps were detained at the police department. The gasoline was seized, of course, as well as, well as their luxury sedans. So people are out doing this, just like was expected. What about here in Buleng? I said that this was going to be up to regional governments to take care of things. Well, what is happening here in Buleng? As a result of the increase in fuel prices, the government will provide a public transportation stimulus. To prevent a negative impact on the local people by the fuel increase, the Buleng Regency government has begun planning to provide a stimulus to the public transportation sector. The regional secretary of Buleng Regency, Gade Siasa, after attending a virtual coordination meeting with the central government led by Minister of Home Affairs, Pak Tito, in the meeting room of the Buleng Regents office, said that in the meeting, Minister Tito instructed each regional government to allocate 2% of regional revenue and expenditure budget, APBD. Suyasa continued, the stimulus was given in the hope of supporting the supply of imported staples between regions through regional owned enterprises. This is so that basic commodities distributed to markets in Buleng Regency will not be affected by the price increase. The Buleng Regency Transportation Agency, DISHUB, also said that Siasa would be involved in increasing the transportation fleet with a lease to use scheme. Hmm, okay, don't know anything about that. More details to come, hopefully. In addition, he will consider providing a stimulus to online motorcycle taxis, the Ojol 
through direct cash assistance, BLT, right? Not the sandwich, direct cash assistance. This is because recently, Ojol is one of the public transportation sector's important players in local society. It's planned that BLT will be implemented in synergy with the Ministry of Social Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. So he asked the targets, uh, inflation and bullying does not exceed 4.5%, and it's even expected to drop to 2.5%. So that's going to be interesting. He said, we will see later whether Old Joel is included in the BLT list at the Ministry of Social Affairs, or if it is not, will be delegated to the district so that the center and the regions strengthen each other. So, in other words, they're not sure what's going on. And as you would expect, Pac Sandiaga is getting involved in this too. Sandiaga prepares social assistance for creative economy players with salaries below IDR 5 million. So Pac Sandiaga is planning social assistance for tourism and creative economy industry actors affected by the increase in fuel prices. The social assistance is planned to be given to creative economy actors whose salaries are below $5 million. Pac Sandiaga said that his party is currently calculating the impact of the fuel price hike on actors in the creative economy sector. He said, as of today, of course, the most hit is the increase in the prices of supplier materials, especially for creative economy products. According to Pac Sandiaga, the increase in the price of raw materials is one of the most felt domino effects in the creative economy. And with the increase in the price of fuel and raw materials, he said it's estimated that there will be an increase of up to 20% in the price of creative economy products. And what products is he talking about? Especially culinary, craft, and fashion products. Pac Diego said, we're collecting data. Everybody is collecting data now. And we will submit it to the Director General of Finance if there is a need for social support for creative tourism actors, especially in the vulnerable communities. So everybody is trying to figure out how to ease the pain that is happening here. But they're going to play catch up on this. And so we'll just have to see. In the meantime, price of goods is rising. And what about tourist numbers? Pac San Diego, got to finish with Pac San Diego. 476,000 foreign tourists visit Indonesia in July. So that 476,000, highest number since the start of the pandemic. Pak San Diego said yesterday that the foreign tourist visits were dominated by travelers from five countries, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, India, and the U.S. From January through July 2022, Indonesia recorded visits from 1.2 million foreign tourists an increase of 15 times. And this increase was encouraged by the VOA, Visa on Arrival, which I talked about at the start of this video. Pak San Diego said, currently foreign tourist visits to Bali have reached 246,504 as of July 2022. This is the highest number after the pandemic, with daily number of arrivals being around 9,000. And so, good news there. If you are coming into Bali in the coming weeks and months, expect prices to be going up. I would hope that the hotel prices don't go up, but expect transportation prices to go up. Restaurant prices are probably going to go up because food is getting more expensive. We're just going to have to see how things pan out as usual. Just wait and see. Okay, that's it for today. Um, new glasses. I had to change my prescription again, and I'm trying this because, well, I'm not real confident right now in driving the motorcycle with my old glasses, these, uh, and I do wear these. They're okay for reading, usually. I'm going to test these out. Don't forget cooking videos. There will be a new one up on Monday. I'm editing it right now, and it is udang. Wow, cooked in butter sauce. So good. So good. Thanks for visiting. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe, and I will see you on Friday.